I was also wondering about this yesterday. Like, people are up in arms. I'm hearing everybody now. They're up in arms over the final four in the rankings. Like, where have you been? Like, Kirk Herbstreet. Great respect for Herbie. Herbie, where have you been? It's not like this is the first year where somebody got jobbed or it's not fair. I got everybody now jumping into the deep end. Okay, I get it. Come on in. But what are we solving here? Herbie should say to ESPN, his employer, hey, guys, how do we make this better? How do we be more inclusive here? You know, we college football doesn't preach parity when you think about it. All the other sports want the bad teams to get better. They want you to get a chance. You finish last in the NFL, they give you a friendlier schedule the following year. You win your division, your schedule usually gets tougher. But when you think about it, there's no system for parity in college football. The NFL is all about giving bad teams a chance to get better. College football is the opposite. Kentucky, Vandy, like some of these schools, they can't compete in the SEC, not with football, right? So what do you do? Do you say Kentucky can sign 27 players, Alabama gets 20? It's not going to happen. But that's the system, and you're trying to change the system. And I, I honestly thought this last night. You know, as much as I've railed on this with just tell these schools they don't have a chance, at least be honest with them, um, maybe we, we go back to the BCS. Just one versus two. Because you know what would happen then? Let's say it's Alabama, Notre Dame. How much would we be hearing from Ohio State fans and Clemson fans? And that's when you might get change. Now, I said, let's do a Final Four. You know, I was shouting that let's do a Final Four. And, you know, get more teams, more fan bases. But really, it's just the same schools. And you don't give somebody outside the, you know, top five, six, seven, eight, a real chance to compete. And that's all you want. Just give me a chance to compete. Ask any athlete on any level. I just want to compete. But this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. That all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, do you see what's happening here? I mean, it's if you said Ohio State, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Alabama are playing for the championship in the Final Four, I'd be like, great, I'm fine with it. Because I am. As a TV viewer, I am. But my job is not just to be a TV viewer. It's to look at this, to talk to people, and try to give you something to think about. And maybe the committee thinks about it. I don't know if they will, because it comes down to business. And this is big business. Do I want to see Cincinnati play Alabama and get blown out by 40? I don't. But Cincinnati would love the opportunity to play Alabama and get blown out by 40. We don't even give you the chance. And that's, that's always been my problem with this. The conference, the AAC, the commissioner, Mike Oresco, he was on with Paul Feinbaum, and he talked about the college football playoff system. This is the conference that has Cincinnati, Tulsa, Memphis, Central Florida, SMU, Houston, to uh, name a few. Navy, here is uh, the commissioner. If uh, this continues, I'd say let's bring back the BCS and the computers because it, it would be a fairer system than what I'm seeing now. I mean, this is the seventh year, and it does appear that the deck is stacked against us and, and against other, other G4. Um, I think the committee is, you know, honestly undermining its credibility with the rankings that, that to me, defy logic and common sense and fairness. He's right. But when we went to four teams, it felt like there was more of a conversation about when you go to four, do you go to six, do you go to eight, do you go to 10, do you go to 12? I understand that. And I had people who said, well, you're going to water down the regular season. No, I don't think so. I got more teams involved in the playoffs. So now what I've done is I have four schools. Let's say I have two more. We'll put A&M in there and maybe Florida or Iowa State. That's it. Those are the only ones who can play in the Final Four. I think we would all be in agreement, right? Let's say I had an eight-team playoff. And then you look at the standings. So, Paulie, look at, you know, uh, five through eight. As of right now? Yeah, so you got a and Iowa State. Iowa, Iowa State, Florida, Georgia. Yeah, first-round games would be Alabama, Georgia, Notre Dame, Florida, Iowa State, Clemson, Ohio State, A&M. Okay, 
So th- those are the eight that would be in. Now, take the next six to eight schools, and now they're at least involved in the conversation of making it into the final eight. That's why I said the regular season doesn't get watered down. College basketball, the regular season, no one cares about. I mean, I watch, I enjoy it, but it doesn't mean anything. College football, every game would matter because you would have a chance to play in the playoffs. Instead, it's four schools, five schools, six schools. That's about it. Now I can extrapolate that, and I get out to 16 schools, maybe, that have a chance. And that's all I'm asking for. Just give them a chance. You know, if you want to incorporate the bowl games, great. Incorporate the bowl games. You know, I don't, as I've been told by somebody who worked at the Fiesta Bowl, you're going to ruin, uh, you know, the integrity and the sanctity and the uh, pomp and pageantry of the bowl. I said, stop it. Stop it. Who won the Fiesta Bowl last year? Who won the Cotton Bowl last year? Who won the Orange Bowl last Like, do we really care? All it is is there's something to watch. And ESPN leads the charge. You know, get these commissioners together with ESPN, and maybe you could come up with a solution here. Or maybe they don't want one. As was pointed out to me last night by, you know, one of my college football sources, do you realize that the Power Five conferences and ESPN don't want to change this? Why would they? They want quality teams playing big games, and there's big money attached to it. They don't want to have a stinker. They don't want to have one of those games where you go, oh, my God. Now we got to fill airtime here for uh, 30 minutes because this is a blowout. They don't want that. And maybe maybe, maybe that's the case. You know, maybe, but I want to be on record as saying, if five years, 10 years, 15 years, when I'm done with this, that I can at least look back and say, all right, I stood up, you know, against the BCS. I wanted to have a playoff, you know, expand it. I, I want to have a chance for everybody who, who warrants a chance. Like, I don't know if USC is any good, but the eye test for Ohio State feels like it's a whole lot better than USC for some reason. And they're both 5-0. and oh. I don't know what the eye test is, but we only had one patient in the, uh, at visiting the eye doctor, and that was Ohio State. There's no other school they, that we said, you know what? Uh, did they pass the eye test here? No other school. Just Ohio State. It's because the committee wants Ohio State in there. The Big Ten has changed their rules. Uh, you got to have six wins. I mean, five. No, you can have five. You're going to have five. Hell, you, they probably could have gotten in in four. That's why they're changing the rules. You know? They talk about integrity and student-athlete, and they give you all these, these catchphrases, cliches. It's just money. That's all it is. Just money. Yeah, Paul. And, and every year the deck gets stacked more against these smaller conferences. You know the term Power Five is not a real term. It's a media-created <laughs> term that's not an official designation in any way. You can look it up. The power, there is no Power Five conferences. When they were talking about the Vanderbilt kicker, she was the first kicker to ever kick for a Power Five conference team. That's not a real term. It's not an official designation. and But it keeps the branding of these conferences to be the heavyweights and the others. It's almost like mid-major. Remember the description mid-major 20 yeah. years ago? Yeah. It was a slight. Yeah. And you were cute and fuzzy. And that's what, you know, they keep uh, Louisiana and Coastal Carolina being cute and fuzzy. They never will let them in. if they. And the other thing about the computers, the computers don't have an opinion. They have a formula. They have an aggregate. This, this uh, college football committee... They can make moves that make sure Cincinnati drops a spot, even though they didn't play. Or Coastal Carolina is 12, not 8, because then they're in striking distance. Well, they they dropped Cincinnati, and the logic was, well, they haven't played since November 21st. Ohio State's played one game since November 21st. But Cincinnati dropped. Ohio State didn't move anywhere. They haven't played. Now, it's not all, you know, it's not their fault. You had games that, you know, were canceled. You know, three games. I get that. And Ohio State is, by all accounts, a very talented team. But I I just, I don't like the system because the system is rigged. 
And then National Signing Day is the rich get richer. I mean, this is what Urban Meyer pointed out last week. He said, this is going to continue. Like, this is nothing changes here. You know who the number one team was? Had the best signing day? Alabama. I'm sure Clemson's up there too. Ohio State's up there too. Not going to change anytime soon. But it doesn't mean we can't at least critique, criticize, offer up suggestions, be angry about it. But I will enjoy the final four. And if it's these four teams, I'll enjoy it. You know, I, I sound hypocritical, but I will. I, I will watch it and I'll enjoy it. But I, I, I just think if you're going to have a game, then what are the rules of the game that we're in? Because it feels like there are different sets of rules for conferences and schools. And at least let everybody in on it. You know? I would love full disclosure where they just say, Cincinnati, you got no shot. Like even <laughs> laugh at them. I just say, you got no shot. Rub their hair yeah, like a little kid in the neighborhood. Yeah, hey, now you, we got some nice parting gift. Coastal Carolina, get a clue. You got no chance. Yeah, see. That's why I would rather them just get the chance to play and get absolutely destroyed. And if we do that for the next four years, five years, then eventually be like, okay, it's different. Never mind. <laughs> but you might get that surprise. You, you might get that one. Yeah, you, you might, might get that. All of these matchups are 16 versus one in the, in the NCAA. When you think about it, it's, it's 16 versus one. And we've seen what's happened as of late. 16's not that far away from one. Now, basketball's different. It, I mean, it truly is, and, and it takes one really good player or players who play together for five, you know, four years, and, and how valuable that is and how good those teams are. It's different. You know, college football is about, you know, 100 kids. College basketball is, is about five or six or seven on your roster. Big difference there. I get it. But I love the possibility. And as I said earlier in the week, whenever we have a, a, a movie, a book, it's never based off the team that blows everybody out, wins by 70. It's about Hoosiers, right? The little guy. Rudy, the little guy. Like, that's what this is all about. College basketball, college football, especially college basketball. Dare to dream. That's all. Yeah, Paul. And you brought up Hoosiers. It's the perfect analogy because back then, Indiana did not have class system for basketball. Every single high school in the state made the postseason. And so Milan, little school, had a chance, and they beat the Indianapolis school. Now Indiana has a class system basketball. You know, like one, you know, double A, triple A, six, five, four. That won't happen again in Indiana history because of the new system. And, and look, I know I, I root for the underdog, but when you say, well, these teams can't compete, all I know is a couple of years ago, Army went to Oklahoma when Kyler Murray was the quarterback and took Oklahoma at Oklahoma into overtime. It can happen. But we'll never know. Not in the playoffs.